Do you believe in God? Well, I believe in the God of Einstein. Okay. <laughs> Einstein once uh, he believed in God, but not the God that intervenes in human affairs. It was the God of order, the God of simplicity and elegance. And he once said that he's like a child entering this huge library. And this child is awestruck at the power and the enormity of this library called the universe. And all he could do was take the first volume, first chapter, first line, and read a few lines. So he was awestruck by this. And he said, was it all an accident? And he thought, no, it could not have been an accident. Do you think about like how it I mean, we talk about the Big Bang and everything and like, oh, that's how something began. But there's potentially unlimited galaxies out there. There are, I mean, within our own galaxy, we're talking about unlimited multiverses. It is it is a number that is quite literally infinite. Do you ever think about like where all of that came from? Well, yeah, that's what I do for a living because, of course, what we do is we run the videotape backwards. We can run the videotape forwards, but what's more interesting is when you run the videotape backwards, you begin to realize that um, the universe becomes simpler. Uh, all the, in other words, the universe today is quite complicated. We have neutrons, protons, chemical elements, so on and so forth, because it's old. That's why it's so complex. It's old. But when you go backward, turn the radio dial backward, things become simpler and simpler. Atoms combine with each other to form subatomic particles. They in turn combine to form a super particle at the beginning of time itself. And then the question is, what set off the bang? That's what we do for a living. Mm. We have the Big Bang Theory up to the point where the universe is going to explode. And then the next question is, why did it explode? We think it was a quantum event, okay? That there's a certain probability that it didn't explode, but there's a certain probability that it would explode. And we are here because we are in the universe which decided to explode. That's why we're here today. But could that just be scratching the surface in the sense that, like, yes, you're thinking about where everything came from, but above that, couldn't there have been infinitesimal big bangs and universes to already exist? And therefore, we don't even know. We, we can't even possibly fathom or concept where this, where the steps began. Well, yeah, we can't. This is all theory we're talking yes. about, right? Uh, I like to look at it this way. Let's take a glass of water and heat it up. And it turns into steam. It starts to boil. And let's take steam now and put it in an oven and heat that up. And eventually the steam begins to split apart into oxygen yes. and hydrogen. Let's keep on cranking up the heat. And then the atoms then begin to disintegrate into electrons and protons. Let's crank that up and just keep on cranking it up. At a certain point, what happens is bubbles form. These bubbles are baby universes. And these bubbles then can expand to create a universe of their own. These bubbles are wormholes. They're gateways, gateways to other alternative universes. So just by boiling a glass of water, heating it up to the Planck energy, which is 10 to the 19 billion electron volts, heating up to the Planck energy, that is the energy at which space becomes unstable. <laughs> Even space itself becomes unstable. Bubbles form. And what are these bubbles? Baby universes. These are baby universes. And it means that at some point, maybe we can create our own baby universe. Believe it or not, I have friends of mine, physicists at reputable universities, who've done the calculation. <laughs> what would it take to become God, to create your own baby universe? And of course, the number is quite fantastic, so don't think that you're going to become God anytime right. soon. <laughs> but it's something that we physicists think about. We think about these things. So heavy. It's just really like, to me, I, I, I think a lot of my life, you know, I was just focused on the next thing and trying to do my best at whatever I was putting my mind to. And, and there's something about when you're a few years out of college, and I've heard this from a lot of other people, that's why I say it, because I did personally experience this. You do start to think about, well, 
well, like, what is there? You know, what is, maybe you think about your mortality a little bit. You think about the the planet and, and where we are on this whole speck of stuff. But a thought that had probably come into my head as a kid that I would run away from that now I run head first into, or, in, into is, you know, what is the concept of nothing? And when I'm thinking about meaning, I constantly think of, like, what is... What would it mean for there to be no space whatsoever? And the odd thing is that you can't picture that because just by picturing something, that's something. You can't picture a blank room that's white. You can't picture a blank room that's black with you sitting in it. That's something, right? And so when I extrapolate that towards all the different parts of the Big Bang and all the different parts of trying to figure out all these 11 dimensions and how they coexist with each other, I start to wonder, like, what what even is the what what even is the next action in front of me? Why do I why do I exist? Why do I need to do? Why do I need to choose good over bad? You know, like it gets to this point where you keep talking about it freaks out your students. I I get it. It's like what why what is the purpose of us even being students? If if I'm looking at it from from their perspective, what is the purpose of you looking after all all the all the potential here to teach other people in some limited one multiverse about it? You know, like, do you understand what I'm saying? This is a very hard way to put it. But, you know, learning about this is the gift of intelligence that we have as humans. But learning about it is also the torture of not knowing what we don't know. Well, you know, ignorance is bliss. And when yeah. we are young, we live in a very blissful world. It's just mommy and daddy. You get a career, get married, have kids, whatever. And you think that's the universe. But then when you start to study these things, you realize, what did it take to create that universe? Well, it took evolution, because, of course, we are beings made out of atoms. How long did it take to create atoms that would create people? That takes millions of years, millions of years for random atoms to form people. And then you begin to realize, oh, my God, this is incredible that all these random processes could create me. Thank you for watching the video, guys. Please hit that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below.